on the programs and projects that are aimed at harmonization of higher education in Africa. But I'm going to share with you very briefly the findings of a study we did, my research group in Lagos State University, uh, along with some other uh, partners all over Africa, about the gap analysis between where we should be regarding harmonization and where we are at the moment. And then I will make a statement or two about some hurdles to progress and uh, how we can scale these hurdles. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to dedicate, I hardly do this, but there's somebody who is a giant, a legend in higher education in Africa, Professor Isha Abuluyide. I want to dedicate this to you for the wonderful things you have been doing for higher education in Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world. Thank you. These are some statistics, so is that exciting statistics about us in Africa. We have about uh, seven, eight percent of the total number of higher education institutions in the world. Uh, for uh, the gender equity people, you may be happy to know that we have about 39 percent of females enrolled in Africa education systems. And the other statistics are there for us. There will be a handful, a sprinkle of Nobel Prize winners. Diversity in itself is good, very good. Because as we know, variety is the spice of life. And a university in Nigeria or a university in Mauritius, we can't be the same. There must be local peculiarities that will reflect our local needs and relevance. So the study we did, we, we had the following uh, uh, clusters of uh, clusters. I would even want to call it diversity index. 100% is where you have everybody doing what they would like, tau, bebo kind of thing. You will notice that, let, let me take it from the bottom, from linguistic orientation. We have Arabophone, the North, Russophone, Francophone, all of that. That's diversity. About three quarters, diversity. Uh, if you want more details of this, please, we, 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 can, we can have a chat and I'll, uh, I'll give you the full report of uh, this study. Diversity index in Africa. Types of institutions, not too, not, not too much. We have universities, we have, so diversity is very little there. Quality of students, very diverse. Quality of graduates, not as diverse as. Uh, so, that does not permit me to go much into that. Now, I had a world selective during the last session, and it excites me because I had it there too. Selective harmonization. The harmonization. Uh, you have unity in diversity. We are diverse in Africa, but if we harmonize, it will, it will help tremendously. And this happens to be uh, one of the focal areas of what we heard during the last session, uh, the Vision 2063 for Africa. What are some of these benefits? You know all of this, because we are core VIPs in higher education, like uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Beatrice said, we have the, the largest stock you know, of uh, high level human resources here, so you know it all. But I just have a few things here that harmonization will enhance mobility, staff, students. We can share resources. Investor of Ibadan in Nigeria can share resources with investor of uh, Malibu University, also in Nigeria, or investor of Legon, Legon and, 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 and elsewhere. That's one benefit of harmonization. And then our standards can be elevated. But we must recall that harmonization does not mean that we all, in the 54, 55 African countries, in our education systems, should be doing the same thing. What are those things that are driving harmonization? I have a couple here globalization, ICT is moving the process very, very quickly, at, moving at a quick pace. We have this vision. Vision at the national level, every country here has suspect. We have a national vision that will have some elements of harmonization in it. And also at the regional, uh, well, sub regional level, and also at the regional level. There are several things that are happening in Africa which point towards harmonization. And I'm saving time here because a lot has been said during the course of previous presentations. We have the Arusha Disabled Convention. AHERS is African Higher Education and Research Space. This is to open up, to, to create a, 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 
a, a global, global would not mean Africa continental platform for us to share research and do, uh, uh, conduct, deliver higher education. They have a Tunisia Africa project that the EU will be doing some workshop towards the end of the week. You have the AQRM that we heard about just now. We have the LND reform in Frankfurt countries, African College Transfer System, Pan African University, PAQF. Several things are happening, and we're very happy about this. But we to take a scorecard of harmonization. On a seven point scale, we find that the Eastern African group is doing quite well, Southern Africa doing very well. Anglophone West Africa not doing as well. What do, I, what do I mean by not doing as well? Harmonization in this case will mean Ghana, Nigeria, Liberia, Syria alone coming together to, to, to harmonize. That is not happening. We are happy to tell you that the Zubwe which is here taking some steps to ensure that that happens in the Equals region. At the Francophone level, what things are happening? Kames is facilitating that. Central Africa moving quite well alongside the Kames. Uh, 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 right on the Kamez, Kamez horse. In Northern, we're not so sure because data we have are uh, fairly incomplete. So what are the hurdles to harmonization? Territoriality. You don't want to share your territory with another. And you see, you don't want to, you don't want another another uh, uh, organization to, to override you. But what they do not know is that you can still maintain your territory. Let's take the Pan-African Quality Assurance Framework. I take, say, University of Illinois, where the person I've, done, I've, uh, I've uh, devoted this thing to, University of Illinois. University of Illinois, you will do your regular AUC accreditation. You will do your regular professional accreditation. But on top of it, and it's an elective, you can decide to take that on. And in fact, that is going to enhance your, the marketability, the global competitiveness of your, of your uh, of, of graduates. We also have political lukewarmness diversity in linguistic orientation and uh, uh, somebody talked about this very 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 heavy in this wonderful presentation. Funding to support the process is deficient. We talk about hurdles to internationalization, we mentioned this. What about the possibilities? You see, since we have good things happening in East Africa, you can scale up. You have in South Africa, you have so we can keep scaling up up to this continental level. Let's take the West African one that is lumbering. Awaw, that's the African uh, 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 Association of West African Universities, whose president is here also. You can work with AAU to push us, push NUC. By the way, I was the executive secretary of the National Universities Commission, by way of further <laughs> introduction. They can push the National Accreditation Board of Ghana, push them to begin the harmonization things, stay on that track. And then we need advocacy a lot among our political actors. How do we remove the hurdles? We talked about security last time, I talked about, I mentioned, I intervened, uh, staff capacity, funding too, and marketing, aggressive marketing. You find, if you come to Nigeria around July, uh, May, June, July, you find the British universities, they come as a consortium, they go from big city to big city, you know, enticing our, our graduates, you know, to come over to the UK, you find also American investors elsewhere. So we need to, uh, be aggressive in our marketing. What's the dream of Guni Africa regarding harmonization in our region? We dream that sometime in the future, maybe 10 years from now, we are now we're going to have a minimum academic standards across Africa. That does not preclude you in your university or you in your country for having your standards. We have a minimum standards. And then we envision a, 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 a time when we will use that standards to now accredit programs. And then we we'll look forward to a time, 10 years from now, when every higher education institution in Africa will have at least 15% of its staff being international. And 15%, the 10% meter of staff are 15% being uh, for students. So what's the take-home message from here? The take-home message is not your back, that when you get back to Zimbabwe or you get back to Liberia or whatever, you dump your back somewhere, and that's the end of this quarter 2015. My message is that the, the, uh, the Secretary General of AAU, what is it? Yes, sir. Secretary General of AAU, I think we should follow this of internationalization. We, can, we have indicators of internationalization. You can develop a checklist, a checklist on these indicators. 
and share with membership of, of uh, AAU. And then you then assess, assess the progress that they have made over the next two years. Not in 2017, I'm going to have your golden anniversary. So during that golden anniversary, let us now know how well we have marched from theory to action on institution by institution. So in another, uh, in another uh, uh, by 2015, 2017, excuse me, about half, yeah, about 20% of the people here will not be here. You have new actors. So you want to start all over. So I'm entreating uh, 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 you to please set up, get a checklist, give to our, uh, uh, our members, and then let's progressively assess how they, have, how they have moved, and then put up the report. Uh, and then let's go beyond signing MOUs. As I said, Second Financial Investors Commission, when I visited the university, the vice chancellor, how are you internationalized? Oh, yeah, I have I've signed 20 MOUs. Nothing, nothing is operational. Maybe one or two, when the VC wants to travel out, we'll say, oh, I'm going to. So let us run away from that theoretical MOUs. Thank you. Thank you very much for. Um both the positive and the hurdles that we need to look at um, in future harmonization. And thank you as well for keeping to, to the time. Our next speakers have a